Hey guys, welcome back to Nailey by Nature. My name is Nailey. Today's video is very long awaited. I meant to film this video when I got back from Costa Rica uh, back in January, but honestly, I needed lots of time to process and understand what I had just been through. However, I think it's time to kind of give you guys a glimpse into what my ayahuasca experience was like. And um, just the message that I felt like I needed to share from my experience. As you may already know, ayahuasca is a plant medicine founded in the Amazon and it's used by indigenous people. It is known to give people life altering experiences to help them heal deep trauma. The psychoactive substances like DMT affect the brain and cause people to experience these major changes in moods, behavior, thinking, and so much more. It is known to be one of the most strongest plant medicines that is out there so in today's video i will give you guys a glimpse into what my experience on ayahuasca was like and hopefully it's helpful to you if you are interested in trying this very amazing uh, plant medicine so let's just get right into it So back in 2020, when the pandemic began, my life really began to spiral. I went through a major spiritual awakening like so many of us had, and I really began to question life and my own lifestyle. I was working as an executive assistant for more than eight years, and I just had no desire or passion left within me for the position. So when I got laid off, I took it as a sign that it was time to move on. I knew I wanted a career where I was in charge of my life. I had the flexibility to live anywhere that I wanted. I had more than enough income to live uh, the life that I dreamed of. I wanted to create something meaningful to our society and for the people of the world. I didn't want to work hard, but I wanted to work at what I love. I sort of knew what I wanted, but I just didn't know how I was going to get there. And I also knew that my anxiety wasn't going to allow me to get what I wanted if I didn't learn how to quiet the, that voice in my mind and heal the trauma that was holding me back from really just being my fullest potential. Now, prior to me doing ayahuasca, I had experimented with you know, mushrooms, uh, acid, different types of psychedelics, and I pretty much used these types of things to kind of help me heal like trauma, to help me deal with anxiety and depression, but there was something that was buried so deep within me, and I needed something more to kind of help me just kind of grab that thing out of me and like, transform that stuck energy that I was feeling. And so by then I had a very structured spiritual practice where, you know, I was meditating, journaling, reading, doing yoga, you know, the whole nine. And one day I was online and I saw a video of a man discussing how he changed his life and it was with the help of this medicine called ayahuasca. And that's when I really began to do all this research. I was immediately intrigued and uh, I really wanted to understand what this mysterious plant medicine was. I was even more interested in how these different indigenous tribes in the Amazon, who are not doctors, who are not scientists, knew to mix these two different plants to create this, this medicine called ayahuasca. And just how did they know that this, these two plants together was going to create this thing called DMT and it was going to create such profound experiences that were going to alter a human being's life and um, transform their consciousness. And so my curiosity really led me to Costa Rica to participate in a ceremony to try this medicine and to see if this medicine can really help me on my own personal journey and really transform this stuck energy that I was feeling. It took me about a year or so to decide whether or not I was going to do ayahuasca because uh, by then I've heard so many different types of stories of people um, where people died and came back to life or some people uh, saw demons or people saw aliens or people met God. It was just people, everyone has like these very unique experiences and um, so I was definitely skeptical, uh, but the number of stories and, uh, and the number of people who had these life-altering uh, experiences and life-changing experiences for the better outnumbered any of those like negative stories that 
I heard or anything that was remotely negative towards ayahuasca. So I chose to do ayahuasca at a retreat center I was living in for a few months in Costa Rica. And so I really knew the facility, I knew the staff, uh, I knew the owners, and I trusted them uh, to administer this medicine. And I think that if you are curious or you are interested in doing ayahuasca, make sure you do your research on like who's administering this this medicine. It should always be administered by a shaman. Uh, despite the fact that I was living in a retreat center, um, the retreat center brings in a shaman who administers the ayahuasca. So it's not them actually administering the ayahuasca um, medicine to to everyone. So there are different types of ways you can do ayahuasca. And the way that I did it was the Brazilian way known as Santo Daimin. Uh, I participated in a total of three ceremonies uh, that began from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, every ceremony is led by a shaman who administers this brew and sing specific songs that are known to kind of heighten your experience. So throughout the night, you're given three glasses of ayahuasca and each cup takes you deeper into altered states of consciousness. To be completely transparent with you guys, I did ayahuasca with 150 people. I know it sounds like chaos, but it was also really beautiful. Uh, there was a lot of support and people there to really like guide you and support you through your process. When I got there, I remember I was just like, why did I decide to do this? But honestly, it, it really turned out to be the most amazing experience of my life. But you know, most people who do ayahuasca really do ayahuasca in a very intimate small group uh, where you are laying down in your own bed. Uh, you have a bucket next to you in case you want to throw up. Um, the setting is dark. There's a shaman in the middle who is, you know, in a meditative position who sings songs all night. Um, that type of experience is known to be done in the dark. Um, and, it, and that's quite different from the way that I did it, which was done in the light. And we were sitting up in a meditative a position. My first night of ayahuasca was very exciting, very exhilarating and very much nerve wracking. It was completely different from what I expected. Uh, prior to the ayahuasca ceremony, you are put on a dieta, uh, known as a diet. Uh, I was already not having meat because of the retreat center I was staying in. So I was already eating strictly vegan meals. However, some retreat centers do require you to have nothing but water and like rice, very, very limited, very limited amounts of food. Um, sometimes this is at the discretion of the shamans. Uh, or just the retreat, I ate fairly light. I was with my niece and some friends. Uh, we were all dressed up in white. So the purpose of wearing white is so that you don't absorb any dark energy that might be released during the ceremony. So we arrived down to the Maloka where the ayahuasca ceremony is being held. The women and men are separated and the ceremony begins with a blessing, uh, and a few people go around to really cleanse your body with a special incense. Uh, to protect and prepare you for the ceremony. What was a little unusual for me about the ceremony, honestly, the entire ceremony was a bit unusual, but uh, what I found particularly unusual was that uh, people bought their children. Some of the, the staff that, that lived there and worked there bought their children. And so at the beginning of the ceremony, the shaman mentioned that this is a blessing to have the children be there. And um, I didn't really understand that until I took my first glass of ayahuasca. And within a few minutes, I immediately felt the effects of the ayahuasca. Now, coincidentally, the children that were part of the ceremony sat directly behind me and my niece, and they were just, you know, being kids. You know, they were having fun. They were laughing. They were giggling. They were playing. They were running around. And um, when I closed my eyes, I just saw like these very, very childlike images. You know, I saw like these giants that were like making funny noises. I saw like Lego type of um, images. It was all colorful. Uh, and I realized I was in the imagination of a child. And I just remember I was just laughing and, and seeing like these cartoons and it, 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 I, it just brought me back to this moment of like innocence as a child. I began to laugh and everything felt so beautiful and light and the children went to sleep and that's when the ayahuasca really began to hit. That's 
precisely when I began to throw up violently. <laughs> my niece who sat next to me was also throwing up. We were probably like the first two to start throwing up in the ceremony. It was like we were ricocheting off each other. I would throw up, she would throw up, she would throw up, I would throw up. Um, and when I was throwing up, I felt like this this deep pain, this deep uh, trauma coming out of me. It was like, and it was so violent. It was like coming out of like my womb almost. Some of the pain that I was purging didn't even feel like, you know, it was my pain. It felt like it was someone else's pain. It felt like centuries of pain. I, I don't know how long this, this pain was like stuck in within me, but it was just like, it, it felt like something was just like coming out of me like that, like purging in that way. When I was throwing up, I wasn't necessarily throwing up food. I was throwing up more like this energy. Like sometimes I would look at the bucket and there wasn't much in there, it was like spit. But the way it was coming out of me, you would have thought that I was throwing up like piles and piles of, of like vomit, but it wasn't. It was just like this, and it was, it was more so energetic throw up. Some people throw up and some people have to go run and, and do their business in, in the bathroom. So you can purge from this way, or you could purge from this way. <laughs> it really doesn't matter um, as long as you're purging. And, and uh, that's not saying that you are supposed to purge, but most people do purge uh, their first time on ayahuasca. But the purging is really just like all this dense energy um, that's stuck inside of you that needs to be cleared out. When I would look into the bag that I was throwing up in, all I saw was eyes. I saw eyes everywhere. This darkness that was leaving me, you know, and it was, I was just like, oh, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. But yeah, it was, it, was, it was this thing that was just coming out of me. There were these amazing helpers who were like quickly coming in and out to like change the bags and make sure I was okay and really just comfort me. Uh, and this went on for a bit. Um, then I had my second glass, which really intensified the experience even more for me. This is the part that I am still trying to decipher for myself. Um, so I don't want to go into too much detail, but I had a complete like outer body experience. I was connecting with people telepathically on like a higher dimension. It's like I was talking to people across the room, but it wasn't like, you know, we were making eye contact, but we weren't speaking to each other. It was like, this is our 3D self. And, and then I was connecting with our 5D self, like the highest consciousness of ourselves. During my second glass, that's when visually I was seeing things happen. I was seeing like people shape shift. Um, I saw some people go from female to male. I saw um, different types. I saw, I saw like a face come out of a face. Like something was like, <gasps> and like suck back into someone's face. Um, it was truly the most intense and strangest thing um, I've ever experienced, but also the most beautiful experience I've had, if that can make any sense to you. After about another hour or two, uh, I really began to settle down and that's when I really began to connect to everyone. And I realized like we are all connected. I felt connected to every living thing. I felt the deepest pain of our planet. I felt the planet burning. I felt mother nature really cry out. I felt such feminine, I felt a, a strong feminine presence. And, and that presence to me really was mother nature and, and she was suffering. To truly be one with nature, you feel this deep sense of, of pain that was also being felt throughout the planet. And I think it's even more painful to describe that to people who just couldn't care less about the planet or climate change or the environment. The message to me was very clear, which is that there is a sense of urgency to help heal our planet or our existence would be threatened. The planet doesn't need us. We need the planet. The planet is merely our host. Human beings have caused so much suffering to wildlife, to the soil, to the water, to the air, to all living organisms all around us. I realize how connected we all are, but we separate ourselves by defining ourselves by our religion, our culture, our ethnicity, our profession, our socioeconomic classes, um, and so many other things. Another major realization I had while I was on ayahuasca was that this, this life, this is ayahuasca. <laughs> this is ayahuasca. It's almost like I was 
looking at our lives through a, a completely different lens and realizing this is the ayahuasca experience. This experience, this experience we're having here on this planet is ayahuasca. A real life is ayahuasca and we should be more aware of what we consume because what we are consuming is consuming us. And this is not just in terms of food, this is in terms of what we consume our time with. During my ceremony, I saw an entire society consumed by materialistic things, celebrity gossip, social media, fame, money, greed. I remember I saw images of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West and at that moment, I was just so confused because I was just like, why the fuck are they appearing in my ayahuasca ceremony? Because, you know, one, I don't follow either of them. Um, I don't use social media. So I couldn't understand the significance of their presence in my ceremony. But what I later realized was that these are celebrities we put up on a pedestal as a society and they are a programming just like their show is on a program you know they come on tv they're a programming and just like that they are a program for us all consuming all of this is what's keeping us stuck in the matrix taking ayahuasca was like taking the red pill like they did in the movie the matrix you see life as it really is and so as i got past kind of like the dark stuff it led me to this place of light, real light. And that's where I really experienced all of this beauty and I was just surrounded by it. I realized just how simple life really is, but it's us as human beings who take life so seriously. We could really just flow through life and life would just open these doors for us, but it's our wants and our desires and it's our preferences that create all this chaos in our world. It's, it creates all this resistance. And so we feel all this anxiety, we feel all this depression, and we put so much unnecessary pressure on ourselves. Life can be really beautiful if we just flowed and allowed life to kind of unfold things for us. And the moment that I had this realization during my ceremony, I stood up and I began to just allow this energy to flow through my body and it felt so powerful that my feet felt so light and I just started to dance to the music that the shamans were singing and I was in this like trance. I just felt so good. I, I felt like I experienced heaven within me. You know, I felt like I experienced both hell and heaven during my ayahuasca ceremonies. I felt like darkness and I felt light. But I also realized that the darkness really doesn't exist. It's really just the absence of light. And as I was just dancing and flowing to this music, I looked over and there were other women who were just like on the same vibe, you know? We were all just dancing and we were all just like in this trance together. And I just remember it being like so beautiful to experience ayahuasca in this way. And it was just so beautiful to be around women, you know, during these types of ceremonies. Just feeling the power of divine feminine energy, feeling so much appreciation for women and realizing how much women are neglected in our society and societies all around the world. I felt so powerful in that moment. I felt my truest potential. I felt everything that I could be. And I was literally consumed by this love and light. And it was so powerful because I truly felt that heaven within me. I felt the kingdom that lives within all of us. We can choose what we feel. We can choose what we want to embrace into our lives. We do have a choice. I saw life for what it truly was and I saw my role in it and I saw the change that I could make. And so this is where I will end my video because I don't feel quite ready to talk about the next two ceremonies that I had right now, perhaps in a few months. Uh, when I have a better understanding of my experiences um, and life unfolds for me, I can have, a, I can make a more informative uh, video, but I do believe these ceremonies should be kind of private um, and not everything should be shared. I returned home maybe four days after my last ceremony and life has been quite challenging. I remember the first video that I made when I got back I watched it today and I was so happy and I still had that like feeling of of like heaven, this light, this love. I felt I still felt that when I got back. Um, but 
life has kind of just been so tumultuous, you know? Uh, life feels unreal. It feels like nothing is real. And I feel attached and detached at the same time. In my mind, there is this constant tug of war between who I was and who I'm becoming. There's also this desire to not attach myself to any personality, but to give myself this flexibility to be more open-minded and expand my understanding of life. I had some really painful endings of relationships when I returned home and I felt, you know, this deep heartbreak, but I also mended my heart with new relationships or the renewal of old relationships. I had a lot of trouble understanding what my role was going to be in these relationships that I had with people uh, because now I was different, now I felt different. So for the most part, I really just stayed to myself. Um, I spent a lot of time at home. I realized that's where I really needed to be. To really heal myself, I really needed to heal my family and uh, my relationships with my family members. And this was not something that was immediate, but over time, I saw that my relationships with my family members grew stronger. There are some days where I feel incredibly anxious and I feel strong energy all around me. I feel energetically drained and I need to just lay down in my bed and just let myself feel, especially those days those times when I have my period. It's really difficult because now I know that it doesn't make sense to take life so seriously, yet I feel all this anxiety about events that hasn't even occurred. It can be really draining to constantly quiet the mind and correct those negative thoughts. In the next few weeks, I continue my travels and I feel all sorts of emotions, but I feel this undeniable confidence within me that is pushing me to persevere through all of my doubts and everything that is holding me back from being great. I really do believe that ayahuasca is a medicine and it is being shared right now to people all around the world. And I think that if you are interested and you have the opportunity to try ayahuasca, you should be really prepared uh, I think it's a wonderful experience, but truly do be prepared for your life to change after, you know, for you to have a complete change in every way possible. I feel incredibly grateful to the indigenous tribes of the Amazon who have protected this medicine and to the shamans who are sharing it with us today, with all of us around the world. If you are considering doing ayahuasca, I would say take your time, do your research, and have a spiritual practice in place prior to doing ayahuasca because ayahuasca lives within you forever. And what I come to realize is that when I did ayahuasca, like I did it in the ceremony, but the journey didn't end there. I feel like the journey just started, you know? This medicine is like almost like growing within my body. It's like now within my DNA and I feel like Yes, I purged so much in those ceremonies, but I feel like I'm purging even more now that I'm back home. I feel like I'm really purging in so many ways. It's a really incredible medicine. And I think that you should definitely be prepared before you try this medicine. A fun fact about ayahuasca is that it is a female plant. And so most people who do ayahuasca often see a woman, who comes and speaks to them. And I sometimes speak to her after my ceremony. And because the ayahuasca is still within me, those days where I'm having a really tough time, I just kind of speak to her. And I do feel like in my meditations, I receive guidance. I, f I feel like I receive a response. And so I do think that's important for you to know when you do have your ayahuasca ceremony. And one other thing that I do want to mention is that when I came back, nothing made sense. Honestly, after every one of my ceremonies, nothing made sense. And I remember I called one of my friends who was probably one of the only other person I know that has done ayahuasca. And I told her about how I was feeling. And she said um, that, the, that the shaman that she did ayahuasca with told her that when you do ayahuasca, it does not need to make sense. And she said... I think that's a very human quality that we're always trying to make sense of everything. And she's like, time will, t time will be your explanation. So 
you know, nothing will make sense right now, but sooner or later they will be. And just like my ceremonies, I'm still deciphering so much of it, but I was able to understand some of the messages, which is the reason why I created today's video, because I realized like, okay, this is the message. And I, I was able to understand it now versus being able to understand it at the time of my ceremony. Anyways, as of now, I don't have the ability to share the rest of my experience with you, but perhaps in the next few months or a year from now, I will be in a much better place to uh, talk about my experience and give you guys an update on my life. I hope this video helped you. Uh, please feel free to drop down any questions you have. I would love to answer them. Um, Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe uh, thumbs up if you enjoyed this video i will see you guys soon bye